As web designers, we're always looking for ways in which we can streamline and speed up our whole development and design process. And if you use Figma, you probably want to do the same there. Well, today I'm going to introduce you to the concept of working with variables. Now, if you're working with tools like Bricks Builder, Jarrett Press, and Jarrett Blocks, and so on, you're probably already familiar with global classes and variables that you can use inside there. We can also use variables in Figma. They do differ slightly, but the concept is fundamentally the same. So in CSS, variables are reusable values you define once and use throughout your entire styles. They help keep your design consistent and make it easier to update things like colors, fonts, or spacing across the entire website. In Figma, though, variables are reusable values you can apply to design elements, again, like colors, textiles, spacing, and more. They help maintain consistency across your design and make it easier to create themes or update multiple components at once. So they share a lot of the same principles. Let's take a look at how we can use this inside Figma. Now, if you're not already familiar with CSS variables and working with global classes and so on, I recommend checking out this video linked in the description down below as well. So I've got this design I previously created in Figma, and currently this is not using any variables. Now, generally, I would recommend you set your variables up at the beginning, or at least have a setup where you can easily import those variables in, and then you can use them as the start of a project. However, let's retrospectively take a look at how we do them so we have a design in front of us. So first things first, how do we actually access and create variables in Figma? It's relatively simple. Make sure you just have your canvas selected, so nothing on the page itself selected, and you'll see you have local variables. If you click the little icon, that will now pop up a new dialog box where we can create our first variable, and then we can start to organize things. Now, there are four different kinds of variables we can create inside Figma. We've got color, number, string, and Boolean. In this video, to keep it simple, we're going to concentrate on the first three. But if you want me to cover in more detail variables, Boolean, and all those kinds of things, let me know in the comment section down below. And if enough are interested, I'll create some more content. So let's start off with a color. You can select it. That now opens up the dialog box, and we can start to, first of all, organize things on the left-hand side, and then structure things inside the actual panel itself. So the first things first, we can create a color variable. So primary, you can click and you can change the color to what you want. So let's just set, for example, this kind of yellowish color. Cool. So now we've added a color in. So that's a simple, easy way of being able to add colors, but there's easier ways. So if we're taking a pre-existing design, let's just remove this one for now. And let's close this dialog box down. So let's choose this call to action section. You can see we've got a couple of different colors that we're utilizing inside here, including our primary brand color and white colors and so on. So what we can do is with that selected, and this is selecting a frame, you take a look over on the right hand side, you'll see we have selection colors. This shows us the three colors used inside this particular section. We've got white, we've got our gray, and we've got our sort of primary color. So what we can do is we can click on this little symbol, these four dots for the style, and inside there, select library and click on plus. This will then allow you to create either a style or a variable. So we're gonna just choose variable. Collection one is the collection by default that we just created. Color, let's change that from color because it means nothing. We'll set that to primary and click create variable. That's now added a variable in. And again, if we come back up, open up our local variables, there is our primary color. Cool. So now let's take a look at how we can organize things. Click on these three dots. You can see currently it says collection one and all variables. Click on here. Let's rename this. You can name this to what you want. I'm going to call this primitives. So what we're going to use this for is to create the basic values we can use in various different places. So we've created our primary. Let's go and create our secondary and our tertiary, like I said. So again, color. So secondary. I'm not going to worry too much what these colors actually are. I'm just going to create color so we've got something we can reference. We'll add one more color in. We'll call this tertiary. And we'll set this to a kind of greenish color. So now we've created three primitive values. How do we actually use these inside our design? Well, again, let's close this down. Let's come over and let's just say we select this text by here. Now we come over to our fill color and our typography colors and all those kinds of things. You'll see we have an arbitrary value inside here, which in this example is white. If we click on this and choose libraries, this now shows us our three colors we just created, our primary, secondary, and tertiary. So if we click on primary, it'll change it to the primary color. Secondary, you kind of get the idea. 
So that's the basics of how we apply them to our colors and create them. But what's the benefit here? Well, let's go back up to our local variables. Let's open up our secondary and let's change that color. So we can see we're using that variable value there. Let's change this over now and say we want to make this something completely different. Let's go for red. And you can see immediately that changes to red. And anywhere else that references that variable will also change to red. So very similar to using variables inside our web design. We can change those variable values and they will be reflected where we use them inside our design. So that's cool. We can go further than this though. Let's create a couple more primitives and let me show you how we can then move things over and we can use these in a slightly different way. So now let's create something completely different. Let's create a different variable. This time let's just choose a number. And what we're going to do is we're going to set small, medium, large and so on. So we're going to use just use arbitrary values here for these but we're going to name them the actual variable name we want to use. So we'll set that to small and we'll put a value inside here. We'll keep it super simple and we'll just set this to pixel values. So for small we'll say 4. We'll create another variable, again a number, call this medium, set this to be 8, we'll create a couple more, we'll call this one large, set that to 12, and finally we'll create XL and set that to 16. So what we've done is we've just basically created some values for these numbers. Now we can utilize those in other places. So these are our primitives, these are our basic starting point building blocks that we may want to reference in other places. Very similar to what you expect with variables. And then you can use variables inside variables as it were. So if you've used something like Core Framework, the principle is going to be very familiar. So let's go and create a new collection now. So we'll click the three dots and say create collection and this is going to be our typography. So now let's go and create a variable. We're going to create a number and we're just going to say body. So this is going to be the body text. So now what we can do is we could put an arbitrary value in. We say we want this to be 16 pixels. Cool. But we lose a bit of flexibility here. So let's get rid of that. And let's say we're going to use one of our variables. So we'll click this little symbol, apply variable. You can see there's our small, medium, large and XL which we just created, so our 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on. Let's say for this example, we'll set it to be large. So now what we're doing is we're creating a variable called body, and we're referencing another variable that's part of our primitives that we can change at any point. So let me just show you how this works. So come back out of here. Let's go and select our text. And this time, we're going to come over, and we're going to change this from, again, an arbitrary value and use the variable we just created. You can see at the moment we're using this arbitrary value of 20 pixels. Let's click this little down arrow, and you can see right at the bottom we've got the little icon for apply variable. Let's select it. So we select this to body, and that now is set to be 12 pixels. You can see it replaces it with 12. Now, again, if we come back out of this and we go back into our local variables, we can do a couple of things here. We can change this over from being large as the body text and change this to something like Excel and see that updates now inside our design. But we can also, let's go back and set that to be medium this time. Let's go back into our primitives and this time let's change these over. So instead of being small 4, let's set that to 12, medium to 16, large to 24, Excel to 36. Cool. So now we've changed that value. So now we can see if we come back into our typography, medium, click and take a look at our text. So you can see now that's using 16. If we come over and change this from 16 to be large, you can see the text updates accordingly, now changes to 24. So you can see how we can have sort of that one source of truth in our primitives, and we can then reference that inside other areas, so inside our typography and so on. So it's pretty cool. You can do this, and you can easily come in now and say, let's set that back to medium. Now let's come in and say we want to create another variable, and we'll set this to be a number, and this number is going to be what we're going to use for the actual heading. So we'll say heading 1, for example. Click choose the option for XL, we'll do heading 2, we'll set this one again using our variables, and we'll set this to be large, and we'll finally we'll do heading 3, just so you can see, we'll set that one to medium. 
These are just basic examples. So now you can see we can easily set our headings to be using these different variables and so on. You know, these are really simple examples, but they should demonstrate how you can use those sort of primitives alongside using these other options. But the beauty of this comes in the fact that we can use those primitives in more than one place. Because we're just setting really basic arbitrary values inside our primitives for things like small 12 and so on, we can use those whenever we want. So for this example, let's just create a simple shape. Doesn't really matter what it is. And we'll just add that outside our canvas just so we can see what we're doing. So there's our rectangle. Select that, change the background color, use our library, reference our secondary. Cool. Now what we can do is we can say we want to put a border radius on. Let's come over to our border radius. Let's just choose the option and we can reference one of our primitives if we want to. So we can say we want to put medium. We now get a 16 pixel radius on there. Let's say we want to apply a stroke. We can click to apply a stroke. Set our color again. Let's choose our libraries. Let's set this to be our tertiary color. So it looks incredibly ugly. Now let's use one of our primitive values to set the actual stroke itself. So let's add a stroke, change our color, open our libraries, set this to be our tertiary color. So we've got this ugly green around the outside. And now let's click inside here and change the weight. And you can see there's our primitives. So we can say, let's set this to be small. We now have a 12 pixel stroke around the edge of that. And because we're using those variables, we can change them whenever we want to. So you can easily reference these. We could also simply come in and let's just change this, just delete it completely. Let's just say we wanted to set up a specific set of values to handle our stroke. Well, we could do that. Come over to our local variables and add some additional options into our primitives. So let's add another one in. Let's set a number inside here and we'll say this is XS. Set that to be eight add another one in extra extra small set that to be four and now we can do is we can close this down and we can simply come back to our button add a stroke in set the color we want to use open up our weight and set this to be something like extra small and we now have a much thinner line applied to it you can see how we can utilize these again this is just scratching the surface, there's still so much more we can do. Let's come back into our typography and there's so much more we can still add inside you. And like I say, these are just basics. Let's create a variable. This time we're gonna choose the string option. And we're gonna set this to be headings. Our string value is going to be the name of the font we want to use, in this example, Poppins. Let's create another one. Again, string, we're gonna call this body and we'll set this to be open sans and if you want to you can also set up the weights for the typography so let's just say a number call this light and we'll say this is 300 medium 400 and we'll just add one more in and we'll set that to be heavy and set that to 900. so we're now utilizing these variables to handle various different aspects of the sizing the typography and the weight of the typography we want to use and now again we can just simply come in choose the type that we want to edit so for example we'll grab this one and now we can easily change the values inside here so what we need to do is come into our typography panel where it says enter again we've got the little symbol for our variables let's click to apply a variable We'll say this is heading, which is pop-ins. You can see that now changes. If you want to change the weight of this, currently set to extra bold. But again, what we can do is apply a variable, select that from the list. There's our typography settings. We can set this to light. You can see how it operates. You can change that. Medium, change that. Heavy. You get the idea how this works. And again, what we can do is we can simply come back into our variables if we want to. Say heavy is a bit too heavy. And let's say we want to set that to 700 and that's updated accordingly. All these options are available that you can set up inside you. And like I say, this is really just scratching the surface of what you can do. But hopefully what this has demonstrated is how you can utilize these and how you can have a much more flexible setup that all you need to do is go into that one location for your variables, make your change to whatever you want, whether it's your primitives, which is kind of like your baseline, or when you break things down into typography, colors, those kinds of things, and how you can reference all these different things and make those changes. And then everywhere you're using those, the changes will be reflected. So it's a color change, a typography change, a line weight change, those kinds of things. It's all handled inside one centralized location in the same way that using a class system inside something like Bricks or Generate Press will do exactly the same thing. Keep that same naming convention and you have a very streamlined way of being able to take your design 
see exactly where all the settings are, transition those over, and have everything set up and working very, very quickly. Now, hopefully you found this useful and interesting. And if you want to know more about working with Figma and all these kinds of cool things, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care. Thank you.